Hello and welcome to Digital Signal Processing Online Lecture Series. Myself Prima Rawan from LG Institute of Engineering and Technology. In today's session, we are going to see the topic Z transform of standard signals and properties of Z transform from the unit Z transform and its applications to LTI systems. Okay. This is the table of the Z transform and its ROCs for the basic standard signals. And in last session, we have seen the definition of Z transform and the ROC concept. So to refer what is ROC, please go through the previous session. Now let us see the Z transform of some standard signals. This will be useful in the examples. So first of all, the first is delta of n. This indicates the unit impulse signal or else delta signal. For that, the Z transform that is X of Z is 1. So the Z transform of unit impulse signal is 1. And for that, the ROC is entire Z plane. Next is U of N or else you can say unit step signal. For that, the Z transform is 1 upon 1 minus Z inverse. So if it is asked to you to find the Z transform of unit step signal, so its Z transform will be 1 upon 1 minus Z inverse. Okay. And for that, the ROC is modulo Z greater than 1. That means it should be greater than 1. Right. The next is A raised to N U of N. So for that, the Z transform will be 1 upon 1 minus A Z inverse or else you can say 1 upon 1 minus A by Z. For that, the ROC is modulus of Z greater than modulo of A. That means it is like this. Okay. The fourth one is minus A raised to N U of minus N minus 1. For that, the Z transform will be 1 upon 1 minus A Z inverse. That means similar to the previous one. But in this two cases, the ROC is different. That means in the previous case, the ROC was modulo Z greater than A. Here it is less than A. Here the A is constant. It can take any finite values. Now the next is N A raised to N U of N. For that, the Z transform is A Z inverse upon 1 minus A Z inverse square. And for that, the Z transform ROC is mod Z greater than mod A. Right? Next is minus A raised to N U of minus N minus 1. For that, the Z transform is A Z inverse upon 1 minus A Z inverse whole square. And for that, the ROC is mod Z less than mod A. Okay? The next is U of N into cos omega N. That will be Z square minus Z cos omega divided by Z square minus 2Z cos omega plus 1. And for that, the ROC is mod Z greater than 1. Okay? Next is U of N sin omega N. For that, the Z transform is Z sin omega divided by Z square minus 2Z cos omega plus 1. So as you can see, the denominator for both of this are same. And the difference is only in the numerator part. And here also the ROC is mod Z greater than 1. Okay. So this is the basic table of basic standard signals and this table is to be remembered so that it will be useful in the examples. Now let us see the properties of Z transform. So the first property over here is linearity property. So the linearity property uh, states that if there are two signals over here that is if first signal is x1 of n and the second signal is x2 of n then for that the z transform of these signals with the different constants a1 and a2 we can say that if a1 x1 of n plus a2 x2 of n whose z transform is to be find out then it will be a1 
x1 of z plus a2 x2 of z. So, this is the linearity property of the z transform. That means if the z transform of x1 of n is x1 of z and if the z transform of x2 of n is x2 of z then for a1 x1 of n plus a2 x2 of n its z transform will be a1 x1 of z plus a2 x2 of z. Okay, We will use this in example as well. Now the next property is time shifting property. Now time shifting property includes both parameters that means it may include time delay as well as it may include time advance. Okay, So let us see what time shifting property states. It states that if the z transform of x1 of n or x of n is x1 of z or x of z over here we are considering x of z so this will be x of n so for that the property of time shifting will be let's say for example if i take over here x of n minus k that means i am considering the time delay property right so for that its z transform will be z raised to minus k x of z similarly if i consider the time advance case then for that if it is x of n plus k then its z transform will be z raised to plus k into x of z. So this is the time shifting property time advance or time delay right that means whatever the value in this bracket that means if it is minus k here to the power of z it will be minus k and if it is here plus k to the power of z it will be plus k. Okay, so let's say for example, if you have to find the z transform of x of n minus 2. So for that, the z transform will be z raised to minus 2 x of z. Okay, here the x of z will be according to the input sequence x of n. Now, the next property is time scaling property. So let us see what time scaling property states. So according to time scaling property, if the z transform of the input discrete sequence x of n is x of z then for a raised to n x of n or as a raised to n x of n whose z transform will be x of z by a. So this is the time scaling property. Let's say for example you are asked to find the z transform of 2 raised to n into x of n. Here this x of n may be your data signal, unit step signal, cosine signal, whatever it is. So for this its z transform will be x of z by 2. Right? So this is the time scaling property. Now the next property is differentiation property which is very important. So let us see what this property is. So according to this, over here, if I take the z transform of the given x of n is x of z, then according to differentiation property, it states that the z transform of n into x of n will be equals to minus z d by dz of x of z. That means what? For whatever the value is given of x of n, you need to find the x of z first according to which the z transform is given as x of z and then you need to take the derivative of this x of z with respect to z and the answer is to be multiplied with minus z. So this is the differentiation property of z transform where according to the variation in the power this side the power of the de derivative will be changed. Okay, So this kind of example may be asked for you. So over here right now n into x of n z transform will be given as minus z d by dz of x of z. Okay. Next is 
convolution property. So remember that in convolution property, it indicates that convolution in discrete time domain will be equals to multiplication in z domain. That means, let's say for example, we are having two input sequences for which if z transform of x1 of n is x1 of z and z transform of x2 of n is x2 of z then to find the convolution of the two sequences that is x1 of n convolution with x2 of n we can say that for that the z transform will be multiplication of the z domain so it will be like this okay so convolution in time domain will be multiplication in z domain right so this is the convolution property the next is initial value theorem or else you can say initial value theorem for the property of z transform so for that we will find the value of initial value which will be denoted as x of 0 that is initial value it can be find out using the range z tends to infinite limit x of z okay so whenever you are asked to find the initial value it will be denoted as x of 0 and remember that in initial value the limit is z tends to infinite okay so let's say for example you are given x of z that is equals to 1 plus 2z inverse plus 3z raised to minus 2 so if you want to find out the initial value for the given x of z what you will do you will place z tends to infinite limit in the given sequence that is 1 plus 2 by z plus 3 by z square so by placing z equals to infinite in these values 1 by infinite will give you value 0 so that will be equals to 1 plus 2 by infinite plus 3 by infinite that will be equals to 1 plus 0 so here the initial value will be 1 Okay, so this is the initial value theorem and the next last is the final value theorem. Try to understand the difference between these two. So here the final value theorem will be denoted as x of infinite and for that the limit of z tends to 1 and it is multiplied with 1 minus z inverse into x of z right so let's say for example if you are asked to find out the final value of the given x of z what you will do you will place the limit z tends to 1 with multiplication of 1 minus z inverse okay so you will multiply 1 minus z inverse with the given x of z and in the final answer you will place z equals to 1 okay so this is how you can find the final value all right so these were the properties of z transform which may be useful in the examples and there may be multiple examples for the z transform these are the references thank you thank you for listening